Good day everybody. Today I am going to speak on city as experience, important aspect of city formation which has not been dealt uh, by many critics and theorists and it is an important aspect which needs to be understood. Uh, the history and evolution of cities and human civilization has happened in cities and it is an important thing to understand that urban which is an important phenomenon talks about urban life, urbanism which is also an important phenomenon which is happening which we are dealing with are important elements of human civilizations. City is a direct representation of culture and of urban life and hence an important thing to understand the experiential aspect of cities creativity and construction. Form and experience are mutually interrelated and interdependent. Form is created for experience, experience is constructed by form. Hence, both are important aspects. As much as we look at form, we also need to look at the human aspects and experientiality, how we live and experience our daily life and the spaces the way we construct and plan is an important thing. So, to design good cities it is important to understand how people experience and use the city. This is a critical aspect which this session is going to focus on and look at this important uh, aspect of planning and city making. City as an experience will be discussed in several sessions. First session is the image of the city which is an important aspect which has been talked about developed, analyzed and theorized and that is where there are important theories of visual experience which have been talked about, we will discuss it. Organic structure and grid structure would be part of that discussion. The second part would be looking at secret of secret space of Indian urbanism which is also an important aspect of Indian history and uh, city making as a question and which will be discussed through ideas of ghats as spaces and shrines and other activities of rituals. Which will also look at the third part which is the everyday life. This is a very important part of city planning and city construction where everyday life which shapes the city's idea, the principles, elements, systems and behavior of pe people and activity. Hence, it is an important aspect. So, that would be the third session which we will look at it. Fourth session would be the events in the city which are also important thing as much as everyday life happens is the events of the city which also shape our experience and form and meaning of a city which would be looked at from the point of view of processions, festivals and other aspects of the city. The fifth part would be the important to me is a looking at the documentary film as a medium which allows us to understand the creativity of the uh, city as an important aspect. So, it will bring out the reality of the city in a frame and in, in a composition which is an important tool which we need to look at it. So, we look at understanding first what is city and I think I would like to draw back to an important definition which emerged in 1925 as we were trying to define what is city and it was brought by uh, so Robert Park it from Chicago school. He said the city is rather a state of mind, a body of customs and traditions and of the organized attitudes and sentiments that inherit in these customs and are transmitted with this tradition. The city is not in other words merely a physical mechanism and an artificial construction. It is involved in the vital processes of the people who compose it. It is a product of nature and particularly human nature. And that is where I think it is important to understand why experience as an important aspect is important, how people look at city and experience and that is where this definition allows us to understand that. Another definition which also emerged in earlier times 1893 by Barnett which also tries to talk about I read, they forgot that the highest possible life for man may be a city life and that the prophets foresaw not a paradise or a garden but a city with its streets and its markets, its manifold interests and its hum of life. We have our neighbors in a city, not the trees and the bees but fellow human beings. We can from them learn greater lessons and with them do greater deeds. We can become more human. So, it is you can see how important is this human aspect 
in the definitions in that early time when the cities were emerging that why urban needs to be seen from that perspective. Hence, I would like to say that experience of a city becomes an important factor to be understood and studied and analyzed to be made part of the design process and planning cities in a certain way. So, we begin looking at some of the factors and nature of activities which create experiences. Commerce is a very important thing for which the form of a city emerged right from the ancient times in our civilization. Buying and selling vegetable markets, retail markets, wholesale markets, garments. So, there are these important structures of systems and activities which are part of the city which actually creates the platform or the structure or the spaces to conduct the experiences of the everyday life. Institutions which allow this to happen also are important things. Temple, right from temple, ritual activities, events at institution, educational, high school, colleges, social institutions and activities. Work is another important factor which shapes our life. Manufacturing activities which is the primary one of the aspects of cities and urban forms, service sector, transportation, health sector and working places in a certain sense. Recreation and entertainment which is a modern need of today's city life is an important aspect where experience needs to be understood of the desires of the people as well as the needs of the people. So, recreation and entertainment are emerging as a major aspects of experientiality shaping our cities and structuring our cities through theatres, multiplexes, food courts, expositions, fairs, festivals etcetera. They are very important part of an elements of a city today. Sports is another important thing which is also emerging strongly looking at the way people have been engaged with daily life and activities at all scales of life. Everyday playing, national and international events are important to, to run and organize city life in a certain sense. Tourism is another thing where mobility has allowed people to move across cities in a certain sense. Uh, infrastructure is allowing to pe people to rule. heritage and history is also shaping this aspect is very important thing. So, traveling experience of a place hospitalities are some of the elements of these particular aspect as an important part of experience in a city. Transportation every day people have to move to work play and do things for the daily life as well as desires of, of their everyday life road rail air sea intracity intercity everyday travel in the city and outstation travels are something which are emerging as an important aspect of experience. Security and control which comes along with that particular structure is an important thing which is emerging today as the cities have grown larger complex where stranger versus the known people becomes a question to be understood. So, police patrolling, traffic control, crime control and other things are also important factors. So, these are the basic factors which shape our cities today and generate the experience as a question in a city today. So, if we look at the first part of the uh, session, we are looking at the image of the city is a very important question being dealt from long time and hence it, there are theories which are shaping this particular aspect. There are visual experience theories which were brought by Edmund Beckham, Kevin Lynch and Gordon Cullen. There are three important elements. Uh, of our uh, theoretical understanding of that particular aspect and it also allows us to look at one of the two uh, 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 two of the important characteristics is the organic structure of the city which generates a particular experience and a grid structure of the city which also generates a particular experience. Uh, there are two references which I would like to look at it where Peter Bosselman defines representing the experience of urban places in a city means showing conditions as they are perceived by the human senses chiefly vision. So, it is vision, visual experience which becomes an important thing for the people in the city in a certain sense. Another reference Gordon Cullen who brought out his study in 1971 uh, looks at and calls it vision is not only useful, but it evokes our memories and experiences those responsive emotions inside us which we have the powers to disturb the mind when roused. So, visual experience becomes an important thing which has been studied by many people and theories have emerged to shape those aspects which have also allowed design of cities in a certain way. The first thing we look at Edmund Bacon's in 1967 we came out with his book 
design of cities, analyzing the historical medieval city and trying to bring out this aspect that visual experience is very important in a city. He uses the tools which are basically the perspective uh, idea where human eye sees the street and space in a certain way. So, those were important principles which he is using to define and try to shape the idea of space as an experience, space and form, defining space, articulating space, space and time, space and moment. So, this he is calling it as city as an act of will where the visual becomes an central thing and he is analyzed this in a Florence city plan which we can see where the public space the way people move is being identified and institutions, public spaces, activities which are trying to generate a route map which people follow and they, that has been an important route map for tourism and heritage activity. And in this sketch he explains basically how that image is constantly changing and trying to engage the human eye to experience and enjoy that beautiful walk which actually begins in this diagram if we can see he is trying to make the map to show that how this sequence of things which are important aspect of visual experience which is what the human eye in through the perspective tool which is what the eye level allows us to see is an important study which he was trying to uh, locate and explain which in detail is being analyzed here which you can see this important example of public space where the facade was designed, the buildings were designed in a certain way because the perspective which the human eye would see would allow to experience a particular space formation. Hence the location of the building, the tower and all those things were organized in a certain way where which you can see in these spaces. So, this analysis is trying to identify how people at certain points are going to see what kind of a visual experience and hence the importance of the facade which was significant in shaping shaping this architecture of the city is the critical point which he is talking about. Also along with this was the location of the famous statues, sculptures which became part of these spaces were also being brought in as a question that visual experience was an important thing. Another case study which is basically the streetscapes Gordon Cullen brought out is, is an also important thing which he is using which he is trying to generate through series of sketches how people would walk and see it at different points. It is a changing image which constantly becomes an interesting thing is what he is trying to emphasize that as the city is uh, uh, formed with an organic structure, it is generating sequence of changing scenarios which is what it becomes interesting and engages human eye. It does not become monotonous and boring and that is why walking in old city becomes very interesting and that is why you do not realize that you walk for long distances and you enjoy that walk and hence it becomes an interesting aspect of city formation which is being followed in many cities and that is where the buildings and the facades and the colors played an important role in that particular formation of that experience. Uh, image of the city, another theory which was brought by Kevin Lynch who analyzed and extended this particular discussion by the two other authors and try to shape and, and, and define elements of that visual theory and he is calling it legibility, the mental image of the city held by its citizen, the ease with which it is its parts can be recognized and can be organized into a coherence pattern and that is what he is trying to emphasize that the visual image is structured by this logic of perception where the build, building the image, the visual image is endowed with meaning, the mental image has gained identity and organization through the long familiarity that is what he is referring to. The structure and identity, the image requires identification of object, the image includes partial relation to the observer and other objects. That is the fundamental thing which is and this builds an imageability, the physical quality of an object which evokes a strong image, shape, color and others. He studied three cities, Boston, Jersey and Los Angeles which is where his theory is based on. So, his study basically moves on to identify very important elements of this image which he calls it paths which are basically channels along which the observer customarily occasionally or potentially moves, streets, walkways, transit lines, canals, roads, a predominant element of image. Then the edges, the linear elements not used as paths, boundaries between two phases, linear breaks in continuity, shores, railroads, cuts, 
edges of development these are the examples what he is referring to so edges and paths are important element so are districts which are the medium to large sections of city which are the observers mental images with, with he is engaged either he is living there or he is working there in a sense nodes which emerge as an important uh, aspect which are born out of the mobility structure where the strategic spots in a city into which an observer can enter and which are the intensive foci to and from which he is traveling so the mobility brings this important element of traffic nodes and others points and they are important for visual experience so are the landmarks which is what he is referring to the points of reference in which the observer does not enter their external elements now these are important elements which he has identified in his theory and that's what we will look at it in this particular example where the organic structure which is what the two parts which i was referring to is where the pedestrian space which creates a changing land landscape you can see in this nolis plan where you can see the spaces the white structure what you can see is the spaces and the movement streets which are engaged in a in a very intimate sense and they generate a pattern where you are moving through the spaces in a very interesting landscape which is what you can see a street image like this and the venice plan also is trying to reflect that particular characteristics these are the examples of the medieval cities which show these theoretical formations and the spaces in which people walk are the ones where you can see that they are strongly defined enclosed and very interesting streetscapes and imageability which you can see as we move and that's the interesting part which attracts so many people from the world to venice city which is what it thrives for and that's the beauty of that particular city that the organic structure becomes an important aspect of tourism and attraction for people to experience many films have been shot in that particular city even today it is an important place of attraction so that's where the organic structure stands tall as a beautiful form of urban design and planning in a certain sense and it's attracting uh, economy of tourism in a certain sense amdabad city plan was also designed and planned based on that particular theory and you can see this particular sector of the neighborhood where the white spa space is following that particular logic where the social life and the neighborhood structure and activities are engaged intimately with public and private life happening together in a certain sense and that you can see in this particular image where the narrow street becomes an important public space beautiful architectural expressions shaded street and intimacy of engagement and activity which forms the characteristic of these particular spaces so the organic structure has been highly positive in its formation and creating experiences where social life mobility activities in the day all through the day becomes an important characteristics and has been also an important aspect of this particular city formation on the other hand the grid structure which also happened to have started in the ancient period is is not a new phenomena which emerged when the automobile came the grid structure was again used and today cities are planned using that particular model so the grid structure is basically trying to discuss the eff efficiency of mobility and control of space in a certain sense and hence we can see in these examples where the city was planned the ancient city was also planned with the grid structure and uh, the block sizes and scales develop so there is a repetition of those spaces in a certain sense which tries to move towards creating a experience which is monotonous and all the streets start looking same and that's where you can see in the new york city plan in this particular image the streets are named by numbers and they are remembered by numbers and not by image and that's the important thing the difference between the grid structure and the organic structure that this structure creates an image and experience which tries to become monotonous and repetitive in a certain sense hence you need to resort to a signage system which is what the new york city follows that the streets are remembered through the names uh, numbers of the streets and not through the image of the street and also it tries to raise the question of uh, experientiality where when walking down these streets you try to become a uh, 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 feel longer and tiring because they are not engaging and creating interesting 
variations and changing landscape as you walk because these structures were designed to are designed today for automobile movement and hence pedestrian experience tries to become a little bit negative in a, a certain sense and that is where the uh, uh, grid structure is being uh, not becoming positive as, as the way medieval structure was talking about. So, the new city is designed and planned with this grid structure you can see in this it generates image of an axis which is another new formation of the grid structure which is also seen in Indian examples. So, the grid structure creates this strong streets formations which are bold, monumental and strongly defined edge and repetitive in a certain sense. So, they do not create facades the way the grid structure created facades in the Venice city. So, the grid structure basically generates state streets, avenues and diagonal street is another thing which was inserted because the city was becoming monotonous. So, the diagonal street came up as to create a contrast and interest of engaging visual image in a certain sense. So, this is what the grid structure talks about and it resulted into streets which were designed in a certain way. One of the important thing which the straight line, the straight streets brought is the change in scale. It also brought an important aspect of seeing the buildings in a different way. So, the building facades became important and that is where the celebration of the edge of the streets became an important thing. The, the uh, movement became longer, the streets started emerging as a strong public realm and lot of streets were designed as uh, market streets and celebrating the form in a certain sense which you can see in this particular image. Uh, on the contrary to this another opposition a thought an idea which emerged as in modernism which was an idea of freedom and liberty as defined by modernism which are trying to oppose the questions which the medieval city was trying to discuss and talk about and it led to forming a very different concept of form and space and that is what Kabuzia brings to, to the forum the idea of freedom and liberty and this image tries to show that buildings are separated from each other uh, and creating a large open space a, a very different landscape which brings a very different experience of living in a city in a certain sense. It answers uh, other questions of density and uh, affordability and, and uh, mobility in a certain sense, but it creates a very different experience of a city which this image is talking about. Uh, going back to some examples of uh, uh, Indian history and Indian examples of urban design where some of these thoughts and ideas of imageability has been dealt. One major example which I would like to discuss is the Jaipur old city which is a case of urban planning and urban design very important example and you can see in this map the city was planned on a grid structure following some of the Indian uh, 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 principles of planning the uh, nine square concepts and it is structured with the idea of a neighborhood and open spaces. So, it is the main elements are the streets which are the basically the, these streets are the main element which are the nine uh, 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 grid structures which are following the nine square geometry and the intersection of these spaces are the choppers which are one, two, three they are called choppers, they are the public squares which are created for public interaction and engagement and experience. Uh, the entrance to the city are defined by gates, uh, the quadrants which are formed are the basic districts which is what Kevin Lynch was referring to in his theory of imageability. The palace complex sits in the center which is another concept of Indian planning principles and the monuments which happen at several places as per this particular formation. So, these are main elements of structuring which generates an image which is what the theories which we saw was talk we are talking about and all these things can be experienced in this particular city as an important aspect. Let us look at some of the examples of that particular formation colonnaded street the streets are colonnaded and that is an another important thing which experience was thought of while designing those particular aspects and elements. So, colonnade structure of that street is where you can see in this I can one can walk through these shaded spaces and do the shopping and that is the form which is what you can see architecturally be dealt with and the image of the street again is a highly controlled activity and process where the uh, uh, the colonnade is structured with a very controlled signage system the facades of the building would change 
as per their definitions and architectural expressions. So, there is variation of a certain kind and that is where the image of that street becomes so beautiful and important that it later led to the signifying the image of the city and it was colored uh, uh, on a particular occasion to welcome a dignitary from the uh, British period and it was given a pink color which you can see in this particular drawing which is being represented and that is where it got, gets the name of the pink city name and the facade of the street, the structure of the street, the form of the street becomes the symbol of that particular city and image of the city and that is why I would say that Jaipur allows us to understand important lessons of imageability which has been discussed in the theories what we saw. Another aspect of node which was referred by the theory is been also discussed in this city. The choppers which I was talking about you can see in this particular plan the square shape large spaces at the intersection of the movements were defi defined and created for public interaction, markets, everyday life and activity. The center of the space actually was a well at particular time where the people from the four neighborhoods would come down to everyday morning to fill the water and go back. Today that well is removed because the new water system now brings water to their houses. So, important aspects of public in interaction which is an important uh, experiential thing for a city is, is removed, but the space is still active with shopping activity and, and bazaars and other things uh, is what you can see. And the space is defined by institutional buildings at the edge because it is an important node of a city. So, important functions are put there where people come and engage and interact with each other. And you can see in this image today of course, the vehicular movement has become uh, uh, too congested and louder and hence it has taken away some of the pedestrian activity and that is where the idea of form to create a node is defined and you can see in that. Another example in, in a city called Jamnagar you can see the expression of a node where an important building which is the market is right in the center of the building and an important geometrical formation and the edge definition which allows that the node becomes an important aspect of experience in the city where your daily life and activity can be done and engage at the same time you can enjoy some of the events which can happen in that particular space because the node has a form an image and a character of architecture which it can celebrate. So, they become important public spaces actually the hearts of the city in a certain sense and hence nodes becomes an important thing which Kevin Lynch was referring to. Uh, edges of the city also become important things of experience and you can see in this particular example in Ahmedabad the Sabarmati new project which has been developed that the river has been intervene and developed a public space and it is a long edge which is being constructed. So, people enjoy walk having that particular scale of activity as a promenade which is the modern element of experience which cities have developed in re recent times and lot of cities have been following this particular architectural formation. But traditionally in India also we created edges which were strongly emerging from our historical tradition of religious activities. Yes, of course, they are sacred spaces, but you can see how public realm was created that these, is a, these are the spaces where people converge on everyday uh, activities as well as events around the year as per the religious calendars. So, is Mumbai city is also the marine drive becomes an important public edge where every day evening people come there to recreate, relax and relieve themselves from this hard urban life. So, and Banaras also on the other hand starts talking about an urban edge as an important experience of rituals and religious activity. So, these are two aspects of our Indian cities where you can see that edge as a concept, as an idea of experience which the city wants to develop as per the Kevin Lynch's theory is being seen and demonstrated in this particular examples. On the other hand, India also has shown and another example I would like to bring into the discussion of urban design where Fatehpur Sikri palace complex you can see is an experience of defined courtyard spaces and you can see that this particular development is a series of courtyards which were developed as an idea as a concept and there were important buildings which were located in the central of the courtyard spaces as an important activity which you can see this particular building which is the uh, 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 a public discourse place where the king would come and listen to uh, the subjects of the city as well as 
uh, courtyard where a music becomes an important aspect of experience where the famous uh, musician Tan Sen played for the king uh, at a particular time. So, interesting idea of urban design where experience of different kinds shape the city spaces and ideas or forms of the cities in a certain sense. Hence, the public and private is an important thing which these examples allows us to understand that experience is an important thing where living and celebrating life and dealing with things would shape the aspects of the city and the forms and elements of the city in a certain sense. Another aspect which was been dealt was the landmark and you can see here in this example where in Mumbai of course, the British when they landed they came to the sea and hence they enter this particular area from this part of the uh, landscape and that is where they constructed this symbolic element of entrance of the uh, uh, country as a symbolism it is called gateway of India. Today of course, it is more as a historical monument, but as well as the other buildings which came up uh, around it also have become important historical monument. So, three of the, uh, the uh, hotel building the Taj and the new Taj building and this particular structure with the space in between actually becomes an important landmark which every day both the tourists of the country and the everyday people of the city also visit for their recreations and important activity. And it is also a point of engagement of many events of the city which happen here public concerts, uh, uh, music concerts, public rallies and hence the landmark is not only a visual element, it is an also element of social engagement, political engagement and recreational activity in a certain sense. You can see the architecture of the building if you see along with the other buildings, they are completely trying to emphasize the importance and significance through architectural expression. So, you can see in those times also these landmarks were created which became which have been becoming permanent in our modern life today. So, the landmarks are important for experience in a city hence they are important aspects of city formation and city structuring, but because they bring important particular experiences of everyday life and events in a city. So, I think that is where I would conclude the first uh, session which is basically the image of the city which allows us to understand how important is experience which shapes the city form and city's elements and city spaces in a certain sense. And hence it is an important thing for us to understand that experience becomes and structures the city space as, an, as a question. And I think that is where the session allows us to understand how the form plays an important, the visual image plays an important thing in shaping our experience and shaping the city in a certain sense. Thank you.